It's been too long. What's this? An all new chair. Must have got it for me for all my work over the last year or so. Looks pretty good. Might as well get into it. On disc in 2006, Hellboy Blood and Iron serves as somewhat of a prequel to the first Hellboy movie. Many years ago, Professor Broom put an end to a vicious vampire, but now someone seeks to resurrect her. The BPRD are dispatched to investigate, but there's a whole lot more to this than just a vampire. So come with me, thrill seekers old and new, as we head out on another adventure with the belligerent boys, girls, and beasties of the BPRD in. Hellboy Animated, Blood and Iron. We open in an unnamed sewer, as Red and Blue endure another day at the office. Now, this opening battle concerns a minotaur-looking beastie, and a guy, well, a skull, in a big robot suit. Possibly in Greece, because they do mention some Greek legend names, but more than that, I really don't know. Plus I don't suppose it matters, so let's just move on. We then flash back in dreams to 1939, and a young Professor Broom leading a team into the castle of Ershebet Andrushko, who has already claimed one victim for her bath of blood. This poor maiden is or rather was, Anna. She was a blushing bride-to-be, until Andrushko sunk her fangs into poor Anna's soft neck. You wouldn't get that nowadays. Yeah, most of the women I know locally, <laughs> they'd stake a suck face in half a second. But the locals are superstitious, and easily scared, leaving the professor to face Andrushko alone. <laughs> which, in a shocking break with tradition, goes flawlessly. Back in the present, the team receive their orders. <sighs> Is there anything more thrilling than receiving new orders? Well, where do you think I've been this past year? I was out in the field the whole time. Got myself some new war stories too. Send me a couple of US dollars on Kofi, link in the description. Maybe I'll tell you about it. That is, if it's been declassified yet. And Professor Broom takes Abe, Liz, and Hellboy to upstate New York, where we meet Oliver Trumbolt. Yeah, they make the joke, but Oliver Trumbolt really isn't more than just a mansion-buying guy with a flair for the dramatic somewhat. And the team suspects 
the whole thing to be a crude hoax. Not for tourists. This is where we discover that Trombolt shipped a great many items from Andrushko's castle to this mansion. The action finally kicks in once the team find the old janitor in the basement. So, that old janitor. Something you should know is that he used to be the priest in the village in the shadow of Andrushko's castle. If things had turned out differently, he might have been the one who officiated Anna's marriage. But, you know, after the whole dealing with Andrushko thing, he kinda lost his faith. Must have ended up in America. And, well, events played out as they did. Must be terrible to lose your faith. Hope I never do. Trumbled. They are raising her. And so the leading lights of the BPRD make their way to face Andrushko. But then the janitor is transformed. Hellboy takes care of the beast. Oh! They could use him to drain spaghetti after that. And meets up with Liz and the professor. But oh dear, Andrushko is risen. And she takes Professor Broom with her. Luckily, the old man's a wily sort, and he's added a certain something to Andrushko's bath of blood. That certain something, if you hadn't already guessed, was holy water. The maven of the eventide reportedly prefers lemon juice in her blood teenies. Where am I getting this information? And so the beast is beaten. Hellboy meets Hecate in an underground cavern. And goddesses are not easily denied. See? You see? Old Hecky thinks that HB should be embracing his destiny as despoiler of mankind and bringer of destruction and badness. And she'll whack him around until he submits. The battle rages throughout the mansion. Things that go bump in the night don't do so well in the light of dawn. And so our movie ends with another flashback. Yeah, so the flashbacks run in reverse order, kind of like Memento. Actually, maybe we'll get to Memento one day. No promises, though. For the moment, though, that was Hellboy animated, Blood and Iron. But truthfully, I don't think I can put this one into my house of love. This movie is not its companion. Blood and Iron is much slower and much darker, visually if not in tone. Barring the flashbacks, told in reverse order, the main plotline doesn't really get going until at least two thirds into the movie. And as with Professor Sakai from Sword of Storms, Urshibet Andrushko is very much of an ethereal villain, and is easily dispatched by Professor Broom. And the supposed real villain of the movie, the goddess Hecate, literally melts in the sunlight. The whole thing relies on atmosphere and suspenseful tension to keep its viewers interested, and I'm really no fan of that. But then, if you came into this movie expecting our hero to punch his way out of trouble with quips and cigars ahoy, then I've got a fistful of X-Men movies that you might enjoy. Not that this is a bad movie though. The voice performances of our leads, ably abetted by Rob Paulson, Jim Cummings, James Arnold Taylor and Cree Summer, not to mention the cameo of Perry Gilpin's Kate Corrigan, are all suitably snarky and lend the weight of camaraderie to proceedings. And as with Sword of Storms, the designs of Sean Cheeks Galloway are characterful and suitably cartoony. But I've never liked the idea of the greedy vampire that must drink their victims dry. It's dark and our hero gets thrown around like a ragdoll, and it's very talky in places. But it is entertaining, 
And as a mystery, I suppose, it would leave you gripped as you tried to guess the twists and turns. Overall then, Blood and Iron is its own movie. I just don't think that movie is for me. But hey, thanks for watching. If you didn't like this video, perhaps you might like another one on my channel. There are over a hundred. But if you did like it, hit that like button. Perhaps consider subscribing, if you aren't already. And maybe even ringing the notification bell for surprise podcasts. And if you want to be extra awesome, maybe even consider my Patreon, linked below. But for now, I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you better days and action-packed movies with a little more to them. So long, folks!